everyone. This is Mary Elizabeth McCary, The Magic of Poppy Carry. That was Alanis Morissette just playing in the background there. A song called Uninvited. It's a nice, cool uh, play uh, playlist on uh, Spotify called Witchy Vibes. Anyway, there's a whole bunch of things in there. And I'm starting to find more and more of that everywhere I go. So we'll talk about that. So here I am. I've been podcasting on a regular basis on Fridays. It is a Friday. I've been a little busy doing a show, so I was away and hadn't been here for a few weeks, but here I am again. I was doing a cabaret show in New York City. I am a singer as well as a witch, and I was doing a show that had to do with where I've come from as a woman and why, and um, also about my connection to the goddess and how that happened and how that changed my life. So. Anyway, so it was very successful and glad I got a chance to do it. So I was doing her work and now I'm doing more. So here we are in the season of Samhain. It is October 26th. So it is minutes from Samhain, literally. Um, The 31st is Halloween as we know it. And Samhain is the Day of the Dead or the celebration the night before the eve of the Day of the Dead into Samhain. And then we have, of course, a lot of holidays around that time that are Christian-based, including All Souls and All Saints Day, as well as the uh, Dia de los Muertos in the Spanish traditions, Mexico and Central and South America, parts of that. So here we are. Well, why is it the time of the dead? We'll start with that. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about witchiness and witchy stuff and witchy fads and my opinion on certain shows I've been watching and what I'm starting to see is a trend as a person who's been doing this for since 19 the 1990s and um, I come into it through a lot of other avenues which I am sure a lot of girls and young women are finding now even strongly more strongly so Samhain talk briefly about that is the uh, of course the day of the dead and the day we revere our ancestors Um, we remember all of those who have come before us And we revere them and ask them to join us. Sometimes we do stuff like uh, dumb suppers, where uh, dumb means meaning silent or gagged, you know, not speaking. Suppers where we sit with our dead. Um, My husband and I are planning on doing that this year since Samhain is falling on a Thursday or Wednesday, excuse me. So we will just make dinner and speak to our ancestors privately and then discuss that afterwards. Usually it's about a two-hour ritual from inception to end. And it's really pretty intense. You invite them to dinner. And they come and join, and you get to discuss afterwards with the living exactly what was done uh, and said. I usually like to go out for a walk after by myself and then just uh, listen. There's lots of ways to celebrate the holiday. Lots of people like to get dressed up or go to the Halloween parades that are, there are plethoras of, or parties. There's been party invitations coming in. I like not to go to Halloween parties. To me, I don't want to celebrate the dead in a silly way i i feel it's a much more serious holiday but everybody has their own opinions and ideas about what it is some people find this the most exciting time of the year this is after all also which is new year sounds funny that at this time of the year when everything is getting darker and leaves are dying and plants are finishing their harvest and we're actually even um, harvesting our meat which is what this last harvest is there's several harvests during the year um, there's a May, there's three. There's one in August called Lugnasa, which is August 1st. Then there's Maybon, which is around the fall equinox or the 21st of September. And then we have Samhain, which has traditionally been the time that everything is taken in. Um, in. In Ireland, they talk about you shouldn't have anything outside that you intend to reap because the devils and, and d- demons and, and fairies will take it off the vine and steal it from you. But this is a traditional time to start thinking about bringing in plants because of frost and harvesting everything also because of frost because you really kind of never know in the north at least when it's going to frost i think in the south as well you're of the united states and, and parts of europe um it's a little different um of course uh this is the northern hemisphere the southern hemisphere at this time is it's beltane so this is a whole nother feeling down there where the, where they're celebrating this the spring queen and fertility because things are starting to grow really heavy down there but up here in the north where i am in new york city where i am located uh, things are turning quite dark and quite cold and i welcome that Uh, a lot of people get very depressed and i think pagans don't necessarily at this time of the year maybe because we kind of know that this is okay and we want to let it go it's like not wanting to sleep now this is the night the night of the year from now until yule 
It's our little snoozing time. Well, we've actually been going into the dark time since summer, solst summer uh, solstice on the 21st of uh, June. And is when the uh, uh, we start having darker and darker, uh, uh, shorter and shorter days and darker and longer nights. Now we've come to a really dark place and it'll get even darker still. That's why the beauty of uh, Yule or Christmas lights um, really warm us because we're really in a dark time. But I welcome that. I like the dark. I love the dark as much as I love the light. I think we need the balance. And also for me, the dark and like the yin and of yin and yang is the time of the goddess. It's the time of gestation and the time of growth the time of rebirth coming, the time of creative uh, work inside of yourself, uh, the time of you know getting ready for a new life in the beginning of the year. And our ancestors all knew this. That's kind of why we have names and, and celebrations and ideas around these times of the year. And we're not the only religion, Wicca, Wiccan people, witches, or pagans. This is not the only time of the year or the only kind of people who celebrate this. It's celebrated all around the world in many different ways and I welcome you to investigate that. Thank God for the God of Google. Google is a wonderful tr tool and we can always type stuff in like celebrations like Samhain, S-A-M-H-A-I-N around the world. S what? S-A-M-H-A-I-N? What's that? That's Samhain. Please don't say Samhain <laughs> if you can <coughs> because it's uh, a Celtic holiday therefore it is a Celtic a uh, uh, Gaelic world, word is Sow, S O W A I N, Sow Wain. Okay, so Sow Win or Sow Wain. People say it different ways. My, 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 my Gaelic teacher, my Irish Gaelic teacher, told me Sow Win. I believe him. So there's that. Uh, Gaelic is written differently than English. It's a different language. It is not English, it has different sounds, phonetics, and, and blends. And so that's why we have that word that way, as well as others we use. So this is you know, based on the sacred wheel of the year of the Celtic uh, traditions of, of, of paganism um, before and even after the Roman Christians came up and the Roman Catholics came up and tried to convert the entire uh, world in the north and successfully so in many, many places, but not so successfully so in Ireland. Um, so these traditions somewhat continued and still do uh, today, uh, these traditions. And there's a wheel of the year that people follow, and this is one of the four sacred points. And it makes sense that it's one of the four sacred points because it's one of the more fixed signs. We are now in Scorpio, um, which is a water sign, and which is the, the sign that really rules the depths of emotion. Uh, it rules death. It rules the underworld. It rules the genitals. It rules the inside of things, um, the darkness, the womb under things, behind things. Uh, that's why a scorpion is one of it, one of its uh, totem animals. Uh, a scorpion is something that lives sort of in cra ca crags and rocks and hides out. But also, the, it, uh, remember that a Scorpio, as well as you know many other signs, but this one in particular is a triple sign. It has uh, the scorpion, the gray lizard, or the eagle as their as its totems. So. so I know a lot of people say a lot of things about Scorpios, which is relatively, in my opinion, ignorant. Every sign is just a sign. It's the sun sign of your chart. There are many other points in your chart that kind of make up a person, not just one. And also I had a high priest that used to say he really wouldn't allow us, and I was glad for it after a time. I didn't realize I was doing it as well. He called it uh, astrological bigotry, and he wouldn't allow it within our coven. So. He was right to say that, and I agree with that now. So don't just judge Scorpios by their Scorpioness. There's much more to them than you know. And besides, they hide a lot of things anyway, as is their nature. I am, on the other hand, a Leo and tell everything. So here I am, talking into a microphone. <laughs> of course, not a narcissist, just a Leo. So speaking of narcissists and speaking of the things I've been coming across lately in the news, I had this whole uh, issue with this witch kit that was supposed to be put into Sephora and myself as well as thousands and thousands of other witches and pagans really got on there on them and they we kind of pushed them to not use this and not use this kit in their store and they they got rid of it and the people who made it have apologized and taken it away not all this was a kit of their perfume, this company's perfume, and also it had in it a deck of tarot cards, some, uh, uh, what was it? I forget. 
Oh, quartz, uh, quartz crystal. Oh, it was a rose quartz crystal and sa sage bundles. And also, I knew a lot of Amid Native American people who got on about sage being a problem. Now, let me talk about sage for a minute. I don't use sage. I never use sage. I'm a Northern uh, European, Italian mix person. And I find and found my roots through my ancestors. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with cross-cultural examination. But I, for one, would never touch anything that belongs to another sacred uh, system based on ancestry. And a Native American ancestry, a Native American ritual and uh, equipment for ritual is very sacred to the people who use it, who created it. And they don't like it appropriated by other people. And I don't blame them. So I don't use sage. Never have used it. I have some people give me sage. I don't use it. I just have it around for because people give me gifts. I really don't use it. I, I, I may, if you're going to make a bundle to cleanse, I really suggest you find a way to do that that fits within your own ancestral background. Okay, so if I was going to do a bundle and cleanse, I might look to uh, plants that have to do exactly from where I live. I would maybe make bundles of plants in New York and find cleansing herbs here. That's possible. Or I might say, okay, what might my ancestors use in the Celtic tradition, my Irish or Scottish or English ba or Welsh background? I have all of those and German background. What might be there then in those places? What grows there and how might they use herbs to cleanse? There's tons of ways and I have tons of tons of videos and, and articles about these kinds of things. If you want that information, please get in touch with me because I can, I can lead you to where you have to find it. Also, if I was saying, okay, I'm, in, I'm doing a Roman ritual or I'm doing a Greek ritual, which is also part of my heritage, my bloodline, I might look to finding a way to use herbs and resins and other things based on that ancestral tra tradition. If I wanted to do an African ritual, say, or I wanted to do a Santarian ritual, or I wanted to do Native American ritual, I would ask Native American people to let me see one of theirs. I just don't, I just wouldn't try to appropriate it. I just would never do it. So I think that American witches, uh, Wiccans, pagans, should take a look at that. And that's my political statement. And hopefully it doesn't offend you. But if it does, sorry, just try to find a way to work with your own blood. That's how I feel. If you're mixed blood, well, then you have, like I am, you have a, a lots of ways to find your path. But if you're not, stick with what you, your family and your bloodline has used. Do not steal from others. And if you don't have to be with, with I, the thing is, I love this representation in the box of sage. I mean, when did it become a thing that witches have to have sage? I don't understand that. It doesn't do much. It is actually um, antiseptic. And it does kill bacteria and viruses. And that is what it was first used for and can be used for still. If you have a sick house and you want to cleanse the air of that, our ancestors used to not know the difference or didn't care to know the difference between evil spirit and or bad energy and or bacteria. They didn't know there was bacteria. They just knew somehow you got sick and it must be in the house. And they were correct. And so using these herbs, bundles of sage or bundles of pine or bundles of lots of other things or uh, different rocks and herbs and roots, these things cleanse the air. Yes, they did. And they help people to live. So they were sacred and that's where they've come from. I just don't understand why witches need bundles of sage. I don't know why we're always cleansing. There's some kind of weirdness about that. I just don't think it's appropriate or necessary. And also uh, crystals in the box. Why? Why are, we, why are we raping the earth and stealing her rocks? I mean, she has provided for us many things. And of course, crystals and rocks are part of it. But why has it become commercial? Why is it witches are commercially associated with crystal? I don't know. That's examine that, please, for yourself. I have. I use crystals, surely, but I use them for myself in very, very small ways. The same way I use my herbs, the same way I use essential oils, the same way I use a lot of things, but in appropriate, sustainable ways. If witches are not being sustainable, then I wonder why they're witches. Because the earth is our mother from which we come and where we go back to. Therefore, all of that is here, including her water, her earth, the earth itself, uh, the sky, the air, all of it. Earth, air, fire, water, every bit of us, all we are, is her. And if we pollute it or use it or rape it for a commercial gain, what are we doing? I don't know. Something to think about. I try not to do that. I'm trying like a demon, excuse my French, demon, to, uh, <laughs> to not uh, leave a, a big footprint, a big footprint of garbage and use of water and, 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 and use of resource 
in my wake. I don't want to leave too much. I want to also, you know, give back to the earth as much as possible. So I don't understand people who don't see it that way, who say that they're witches. So something to think about. So on that note, now to the next thing I want to talk about, which is fun, is um, television shows and movies now with witches in them. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So from when I was a little girl, and I think this is why I'm sitting here talking to you in a microphone, I have been interested in the occult. I mean, from when I was a little girl, I mean, six, seven. And I used to watch every black and white movie that ever occurred with the name Witch in it. I, you know, I've never seen Bell, Book, and Candle, so I think I'll, sh I'll give that a shot, maybe today or tomorrow. But um, other than that, I've seen anything and everything that had in the word witch in it or magic in it. I read books when I was in uh, elementary school with the word magic in them. I, anything with the word magic in it, occult in it. I had a Ouija board when I was 11. I had tarot cards when I was a baby, a kid, a little kid. So and been reading them my whole life because of my, my grandmother's. I have a traditional stregaria or strega Italian background, which was handed down for me from my great great grandmothers all the way through my grandmother to me of uh, palmistry and reading of cards. So that be that as it may. Um, so I was always involved in this kind of thing. And also I, I grew up with women in the Irish side of my family, my mother's side of my family, who were serious mediums, who really were mediums and could read minds and could talk to the dead. And gratefully, I've inherited some of that talent, although I don't necessarily like talking to the dead. So, oh, look at this. I have the Viking song on. If I had a heart by Fever Rays and this witchy vibes play playlist. That's funny. Well, it is kind of dark, that song. If you ever watched Vikings, Vikings, I have to say, I have to give them some credit. Oh, I have a cuckoo clock, so it's telling you what time it is. So now you know I'm doing this at 8 o'clock p.m. Yes, I am, on a Friday night. Instead of at a party, I'm talking to you. So with Vikings, it's a, it's a, it's a, good, a pretty good grant book because it's written by the, it's, it's done by the History Channel of the pagan Norse traditions. Not all the way, but very good adaptation of them and a, a presentation of them. Anyway, so that's something I, I recommend Vikings for that reason if you are interested in the Norse because it's pretty pretty in, in, pretty intelligently done. You, as violent as it is, but that's what it was. So um, it's also very masculine and also I would say God-based and masculinely based. So if that's something you want to check out and all women as well as men should do that, check it out. Um, so I've been watching a show called, uh, uh, based on a book I read called The Discovery of Witches. Um, which is on um, English television on Channel 4, Sky 4, something like that right now. Um, and I read the book by Deborah Harkness, uh, all three of them actually. It's a trilogy of books. Um, a very well written books, very nice. I will not give you any clue about what they're about because I suggest you read them and they're very good, well written. And also this, this, the series itself is also very good. I am also just started watching just now, and, and this inspired me to come on and talk. Charmed. There's a new Charmed. There was an old Charmed and I think the 90s. And now I never saw that one, but now there's a new one out. And I've also been watching American Horror Story. Oh, <sighs> American Horror Story. Anyway, so what I'm seeing is this. It's an, it, the, the, let, let Deborah Harkness and the discovery of witches put that aside for a moment. Although there's a, there is a, there is a, a, a strand that goes through all three of them, these things that I just mentioned, ha the uh, discovery of witches, Charmed, and American Horror Story. It's a lot about female o uh, uh, oppression and feminism. So I'm starting to see a correlation here. I think that when I first started to study, really seriously study witchcraft, when I became a witch, was the mid to early 90s. And at that time, we had like, uh, no, I, I wasn't there because of the movies or Charmed, but there were movies out called uh, The Craft and Charmed was a, a television series at the time. I didn't know any of them but until later on. But that brought a lot of people into paganism, which is great. Um, I think the media has a lot to do with a lot. Um, don't f let's not forget Harry Potter and how many people grew up with Harry Potter in their hands. I read all those books, I saw all those films, so and I adored them as well. But the thing that I'm starting to understand that people do not, and I have to say this to people, I'm starting to understand I have to say this in a way that makes sense. That is fantasy, 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 fantasy. That is fantasy. I don't care if anybody really believes that they can fly 
or they can you know and demolish demons with their mind or um they can blow things up by just touching them this is like in the realms of superheroes so perhaps that's what it is there are a lot of superhero movies going on right now too we see them by marvel coming up iron man and the ant-man and all these other man all ending with man kind of movies and the only females that show up in it are what i read i saw something recently are called uh, female fuck toys you know like uh Oh, I don't even know. I can't even remember their names. They're so inconsequential in these movies. So the female uh, superheroes are not very superhero-y or superheroines. They're just sort of accessories um, that wear really tight leather corsets, jump around with high boots on, and, you know, beat up guys. Some. Um, period. So um, from when I was a young girl, I was I was dealt with the likes of uh, Catwoman. Ugh who's a villain in, in latex and caused so many men to want to have dominatrixes. It's not even funny. But this is a dark, weird, male fantasy thing that has nothing to do with the reality of women at all in any way, shape, or form. But, you know, it's fun. Fun is fun. Fantasy is fantasy. Men are allowed their fantasies as well as women. So here we are talking about uh, these witch things, though. I, fi- I find that this is... Um, our superheroes. These are like our superheroes. These are our female superheroes in some way. Our heroines, our superheroines. Here's a woman, and we talk about these traditional witchcraft things. I am a traditional witch. I know what that means. I know that it was information passed on to me from my my grandparents and, and my mother somewhat. Even though we were raised to be Catholic, and seriously so, it was always part of the thinking of the family. This means this to me that for centuries my family held healing traditions my family held meditation traditions my family held you know in in awe of their their mediumship and knowing that there is no death and the part of that actually fueled their uh, religion and their belief in the divine so that kind of a thing does exist there is traditional witchcraft you do get things passed on from mothers and grandmothers and great-grandmothers aside from your hair color you get talents and some talents are more advanced psychic ability we ha- all have psychic ability but some of us have more advanced psychic ability every one of us has empathetic traits some people have more empathetic traits every one of us has very strong mind power can really concentrate can really focus in some way or another some people are very advanced at that way some people can move energy through their bodies better than others and, and and heal with their hands. Some people have a knack for mixing herbs, just like they have may have a knack for cooking, and using those herbs to heal or cleanse, as we were talking about before, or to bring up a heightened sense of mind in ritual. So there's all that. So that's what the traditional thing is. I was just watching this Charmed now before I go on here, and it was it's really fun. It's it's young girls in college, and and one's a lesbian and very very feminist. One's very cute and pretty, and wants these boys, and one's a very intellectual scientist. And they're all like youngish women, maybe up to twenty five, you know, and uh, very cute, very really, very lovely, good actors, nice stuff, well done, good set, great lighting, great costumes, love it. Uh, good great special effects too so there's that and it was fun it's fun to watch it it's fun it also brings up you know they're, they're fighting the patriarchy they're fighting men who have uh, hurt other women who they're fighting this darkness in the male um, uh, be it in the male mind uh, removing demonic forces from the boys they like it's really kind of cool and it's very feminist and I think that's what it is that's what I really believe it is I think that we're starting to see um, the suppression by our government in America here, which has caused issues everywhere and has had, uh, you know, uh, I mean, we're, we're, America is pretty, pretty involved in most of the world. And so when we are in a malaise, I think we spread it, unfortunately. And what I was saying about the 90s was another time when there was malaise. There was a lot of uh, uh, backlash against feminism, a lot of backlash against women during the the late 80s into the 90s and so that's why there was a rise of witchcraft at that time and I was part of that rise and here we have it again I also think that because I was part of that rise and I definitely have a child who is 29 uh, in a few in a little bit um, so 
yes, he's of age as, as is his are his friends to really um, understand what I was doing as a witch, as a pagan, maybe the first generation that was truly exposed to their parents um, doing meditation work or a chanting or having female coven work or any of these things. And, and my son actually did um, uh, witness a lot. Uh, I used to bring him to where, to where I studied at enchantments and he used to want to sit up in the trees and it was a tree in the yard he'd climb it and sit there and watch the whole thing and he just in- absorbed it of course he read every single harry potter <laughs> after that by any, any over and over because he wanted powers too he wanted to be like harry disappointment is you're not like harry you can't go say some latin word and f- have fire fly out of a wand mm, not literally you can uh, say some latin word and have your energy fly out of a wand and then make things happen So this is a a big conglomerate kind of a talk today. I'm talking about my opinion about things. I'm talking about actual Samhain and talking about magic and I'm talking about energy. So lots of things, you know, lots of things get involved in witchcraft. Witchcraft is not a simple thing where you put something in a glass container and it blows up and 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 the world goes the way you want it. What it basically is, is moving energy with your mind, period changing the world the way to the way you you desire it to be for yourself you don't ever try to change anyone else because that's considered black magic and really why would you want to waste time if you want something you have to change yourself in order to get it if i want love then i must be ready for it i have to be worthy of the love i'm requiring i have to imagine myself in love and being grateful for it if i want money then i have to think about how is it i have to change in order to get that money I can't go poof and the money comes in a bag at the door unless I think about it quite a lot and get myself prepared for it to come to me and know that it's coming to me and believe that in my bones, in my marrow of my bones and in my soul and spirit, then the money will come in a bag to my door. That's really basically it. It's about mind control, seeing the outcome, believing the outcome and knowing it is there. So, I'll get into that some more next time I talk because we have only a few more minutes left in this podcast and I said a lot of different things. And if you have any questions about any of it, um, you can find me on Facebook at The Magic Apothecary on Facebook. You can find me under my regular name, Mary Elizabeth McCary, M-I-C-A-R-I. That is my name. Very proud of it and will not change it to be some kind of a, you know, a, uh, the, the, you know, sky, sky hawk or eagle water or something. I don't do that. I don't believe in that. And I am not lady anybody. I'm just Mary. That's why my mother called me and we stick to it. And so you can also find me on my uh, website, The Magic Pop Carry, or you can find me um, here on P- uh, Podbeam and all that information is there. And I'm also up on, I'm up on Spotify and YouTube. You can find me there. You can write to me at themagicalapothecary at gmail.com. Uh, don't be rude. <laughs> don't say horrible things to me. Or I might have to do magic and I will. I have no problem protecting myself. I truly believe that that is my right. Anyway, so there's all that. If you would like to check out some of my magical products, you can find the Magic Apothecary, A-P-O-T-H-E-C-A-R-Y, on Etsy as well. So you can reach me in many different ways, and we can talk. And I have people ask me questions all the time, and I'm very happy to help people find things, um, help them you know, look for books or information on Google or websites that can help them in, on their quest. And I am here to answer any and all questions you may have that if I know the answer to, I will give it to you. My job, I feel, is to speak for the goddess and to disseminate, disseminate, disseminate her information. This is the information of our ancestors. This is the information that the goddess put in my mouth and in your mind and mouth and hands and body to use for her good upon this earth. That's my true belief. All right, so anyway, may you have a blessed Samhain. Remember to be with your ancestors. Remember to be full of energy and be joyful. Be joyful about life. One of the reasons we eat candy and garbage and funny, good, chewy things like candy corns, which I love, on Samhain or Halloween is because we are remembering that we are alive and that life is sweet and good. Yes, it has dark times. Yes, there is death, but there is life every single day until there is death. Remember that always, my friends. Remember that always. May the God and Goddess be with you. May you be blessed and get everything in this life that you ever, ever wanted. So mote it be. 
blessed be and light and love.